Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you guys is Freezed Package with Cloud Firestore. For those who don't know what is Freezed, Freezed is just another Flutter package that allows you to generate code or we call them code generators. So it's uh, created by I think Remy Rousselet, the guy who is very good at Flutter, like yes, he's very very good in Flutter. And he saw many of these code generators for data classes. So data classes that allows you to, you know, create some sort of like interfaces. But he sees that sometimes it is a trade-off where you have simple syntax but lack of features or you have advanced features but very complex syntax. That's why he created Freeze. And I chance upon it and I think it's pretty good. It's simple enough to understand and simple enough to, you know, get things going. So I'm going to show you on how to use the freezed package. So first of all, you need to install it. So how to install it is inside your PubSpec YAML, you have to have the freezed annotation inside your dependencies and inside your dev dependencies, you must have your build runner and your freezed package. So there's a couple of things that you have to set up. So let's do that. I have copy and pasted what is needed to be inside my dependency. So freezed annotation, build runner, and freezed. Currently, I'm using my repository, Udemy Links landing page, which is coming out very soon. Links in the description. And you could see that I have the Cloud Firestore package inside because we are going to use the freezed package with the Firestore package. How are you going to use in real life? All right, so let's install it. I have with me here a user.dart file under my models folder and it's a very simple interface kind of code structure where I have my different properties and different methods that I have. So I'm going to convert this users.dart into a simplified version using the freezed package. So I need to create a new folder. Let's call it user underscore freeze.dart. Once we have our new file, let's put in the different imports and lines that is required for us to generate the code. So you have the first import line that imports the freezed annotation package. Second is your Flutter foundation package. And last one is this line that's called part user underscore freeze dot freeze dot dot. Don't worry if there's an error. So how you name this part of the line is that your current file that you're in, place the name over here and then have the freezed dot dot words after it. Next, we are going to create some boilerplate for us to use in our users dot dot. Let me explain you the syntax of the boilerplate that's required for you to create your generated code. So first of all, we need this word freezed. This is just a simple annotation that allows the code generator to identify and create the code for us. Next is we are going to use this abstract class with our class name person or for our case is user. And then at the same time, we can create our parameters over here. So this is our named parameter and it will instantiate a person class. So it's pretty simple with just these lines of code, you're able to use the class and initialize using the parameters. So let's create the add freezed. Next thing is abstract class. And let's put in the word user and with this syntax user. Now we need to create a factory constructor, factory user with our parameters. So if we go back to the users, our properties are this thing. This name, ID and profile picture. So let's add in the different properties that we have inside the user. So let's put in string, name, string, ID, and lastly string, profile picture. And this will initialize a user. That's about it. We have our boilerplate over here. The next thing that we need to do is to run a terminal command for us to generate this code. So let's open terminal. 
And there's two types of command that you can do in order for you to generate the code. So if you see over here, flutter pub, pub, run, build, run a build, or this one. If you're using flutter, use this first line of command. If not, then you can use the second line. So we're going to use the first line because we are using flutter. Let's paste it and press enter. For those who have this command running the first time, it will take quite a while for you to generate the code. So take a seat, have some coffee and relax. I'll get back to you when this code finish running. All right, once it's done, it actually has created another file that is called user freeze freeze dot dot. If you look into your repository, you could see that this file has been created automatically for us. If you look into it, there are the different classes, mixins, and methods that it has created. It has two strings that gives us a simple string which helps us see the user class. If you were to go back to the users.dart model file, not only that we have these three properties, but we also have certain methods that we have created. So in order for us to create these methods inside the freezed boilerplate, inside the documentation, it explains how we can insert some custom getters and methods inside our freezed boilerplate. So first thing is that we need to add a constructor over here. Next thing is that we need to change the width into implements and then we are able to put in our different methods and setters for our class. So let's do that. So let's add in a user. At the same time, let's change the width into implements. And lastly, we just copy and paste these two methods that you have created and paste over here. And let's import this document snapshot from the Cloud Firestore package. Okay, now we have all of these done. Let's regenerate the code again. And now you could see there is no warning for our constructor over here. All right, so instead of having the whole data class with the different override methods, we are just left with the ones that we care about, which is the different properties and the different methods that we need. So now let's swap out the current implementation of the user to use our user freeze class. So simple replace in our VS code will do. And now let's try running our app. Okay, so our web app is currently working. So another thing that I want to share with you is this thing called union and sealed classes. So in summary, because this syntax is similar to Kotlin, for those who don't know, this union sealed classes, you could think of a class with enums. With this loading and error, this allows you to have initialized certain enums or words for you to use. So let me show you how you can use these unions and sealed classes with Firestore. So this is how you create a union class inside the freeze package. The only difference between a union class and a typical data class is that it has the word constant over here. And then at the same time, it has this method syntax. So using the type, you are able to use a method for different operations. Let's stop the app and let's generate the code. If you want further explanation on sealed classes using the freeze package, I would recommend the video on top of the screen by Riso Coder. He explains it very well on what union classes are and its simple uses. So I'm using these union classes for the Firestore functions. Once you have generated the code, what we can do is we can create a simple function. Let's call it perform links crud. So to perform our links crud, let's go and see our individual widgets that has these Firestore functions. Let's go to the add button. So inside our add button, it has this add function that we got from our document reference. Let's have this 
collection reference and use it as our argument and we paste it inside here. Second is we need a links operation type. So what we can do is we can just put in our class over here and name it operation. The cool thing about using union classes is that you have methods that comes with it. For example, when. So when is a function that allows you to have the result to be shown if you were to get the different operations, either add, update, or delete. So let's use the add method. So let's create the add method. So our add method has our link class. So what you can do is you can copy this and then have it initialized over here, paste it over here, and let's change this new link to link to map. Okay, let's save this and we should have a semicolon and have a comma over here. All right. So in order for, okay, and one more is to put another comma over here. In order for us to use this perform links CRUD, let's copy this method. Let's paste it over here and import it. So let's import our perform links CRUD from our user freeze.dart file. Under our perform links CRUD function, we require a collection reference and at the same time this thing links operation. So we are adding our link to Firestore. So let's use the add method that we have. Let's put in the new link variable that we have instantiated. So there you go. So you have the function that adds a new link. This is how you use your function perform links CRUD to be able to use with the operation, links operation that you have created inside our union class for our freeze boilerplate. So now let's do the update and delete. So let's go to the edit button. And now edit button has a new, so edit button has this links collection document.updateData, which is a Firestore function. However, it requires another variable in order for you to successfully update your data, which is the document ID. So what we can do is we can create a new named parameter but optional one. Let's call it document ID. Let's paste it over here. And then let's copy the whole function without the semicolon. Same thing, it returns us a link. So let's put the word link over here and paste it here. Let's delete the data dot and let's put this into link dot to map. Now let's convert this into a block body so it's easier for us to read. Okay, we are not returning, we are just running the function. We have refactored our argument. Now let's use this update factory class. So let's go to edit button. We can just copy this thing and paste it over here. So let's import. At the same time, this is update. And we require the document ID under the update. So let's have that. All right, so we can comment this out. Same goes to the add button. We have already commented this out. Okay, lastly, let's go to our delete button. So our delete button have this links collection dot document dot data document ID dot delete. So let's copy everything. And this doesn't have a returned value. So we can put our function over here and delete this. All right. We can move the delete up so it's easier to, for us to read. So add delete and update. And then same thing is we can just copy this thing. Let's put a comma so it's easier for us to read. And let's paste it inside our delete function. Our delete button. Comment our Firestore function. Import it and have the word delete without any argument and save this. So we have successfully used our function that uses our union class. So let's see in our app whether it works. All right, so inside our app, we have our add button. So let's create a new button. Let's call it Twitter. And so it adds our Twitter, very nice. 
Okay, now let's change it to LinkedIn and let's update it. All right, so it works. And lastly, let's see if our delete works. All right, so our update, add and delete works for our union class. So that's it. That is how you can use your freeze package with Firestore. You can use it to generate a code for your user very simply using this line, very simply using this boilerplate. At the same time, you can use the union class to create your specific constructor that you have over here. So this is just one way. It is not the right or wrong way. And I feel that it makes your code much cleaner because if you have more things that you want to add, you can always insert it over here and it's manageable because all of your functions are inside one spot. All right, that's it. So there is one thing that I want to show you is there is this thing called maybe when. Maybe when allows you to have if there is no operation that is being passed through inside this function, then you have this or else. So you have or else. And then maybe what you could do is you can print something. No such operation. So if you have a different operation and if none of these different actions is inside, then this is like a catch statement that allows you to return something like an error message and whatnot. So yeah, this is very helpful if you want to have a standard of writing code throughout maybe a team because if throughout a team you might have different way of creating functions and classes so having a code generator allows you to have a certain type of standard that is easily readable so that's it thank you for listening if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more this kind of flutter videos and comment down below what other packages that you want me to review or use with Firestore. And that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.